All right, let's get into practice problem number one associated with sample problem D <clears throat> here in the fourth section of chapter four. All right, so we are going to start putting together some, uh, some work using, yes, our mathematical representation of Newton's second law. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be using that. Uh, we'll be uh, understanding that a lot of the time we can uh, replace a with G because we're talking about acceleration due to gravity. Uh, we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be using uh, some, some sine cosine, okay? Uh, remember, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, we're also going to be using um, our newly understood idea of coefficients of friction, right? Uh, we have a coefficient of static friction, and we have coefficient of kinetic friction. And we're going to end up uh, using these. Well, not both of them right here. We're not going to use kinetic energy, to be honest. Um, we're going to be using an equation uh, that allows us to solve for... Uh, the coefficient here, and let re let me remind you that if you have force of a static option or option on a static object, uh, basically to, to hold it still, it is the product of the coefficient of static friction multiplied by uh, the normal force. Okay, uh, you can also represent that as uh, again a coefficient of static friction multiplied by m g. Right, because what is uh, <clears throat> what is force equal to? Mass times acceleration. Well, what if the acceleration uh, is due to gravity, right? Uh, which is typically what we're talking about uh, with relation to the the normal force. So we can actually uh, uh, use these definitions uh, to a great success uh, in this in this problem. Now, <clears throat> reading the problem here uh, is. Well, it's a little bit tricky. Kind of have to sit through some uh, some of what they're getting at. So a man lifted 200, uh, 281.5 kilogram load. Okay. So it's just the thing. Uh, off the ground using his teeth. Okay. The thing special about his teeth. There isn't anything important to even about uh, the fact that he lifted it off the ground. Because the next sentence reads, Suppose he can hold just three times that mass on a 30.0 degree slope using the same force. Okay, so what that means is the man was able to pick up that load. Okay, it, it means he picked it up, he accelerated it, it was moving, uh, and so that means that uh, he was using a force sufficient to pick the darn thing up. Well, we have this kind of arbitrary fact supplied to us by the, by the question is that uh, he can actually hold um, three times that mass on this specific slope. Okay, uh, let's, let's, draw, let's draw the slope. So, right angle, 30.0 degrees, and then we have some mass on here that is 200, 81.5 kilograms. Now what's being claimed here is that this person can hold this thing steady without it sliding backwards, but also uh, he's not exerting enough force to move it up uh, the slope. Okay, because it's stationary. It's stationary. So that's why we're going to end up using uh, static friction. Okay, static friction, because the object is in fact not moving. Um, now, the reason uh, that, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, the reason that it's important that we identify the mass um, is because that's going to help us calculate the, the force that's being applied, right? The force that's being applied. Now, let's go back to our understanding of uh, net force and uh, when it is to zero, right? This thing isn't moving, right? No. Hold can hold just three times mass, right? Hold it there. That means movement is zero. And so if there's no acceleration, if there's no change in motion, that means that net force is equal to zero. 
So, again, that means not moving. Right? Again, another way, another way to relate that information is that, okay, um, what should I do? Um, and of course, net. I don't represent that. Hmm. Hmm. Let's think here. It's gonna be another word escaping me right now. Okay. So uh, how do I do that? Let's just go. Just go to normal force. <clears throat> so when you add these two forces, sorry. Uh, when you add them together, gosh, the total net force equals zero, okay, like we said. So uh, the force that is actually pulling this block down, the force that's pulling this block down is exactly equal in magnitude, but opposite direction, uh, to the force that is uh, pulling it up. Okay, so they completely cancel each other out. It's zero. Mathematically, that's how you determine that something is not moving. If the net force on the object, or sorry, not not only just moving, uh, no change in motion. It can be moving. It can be moving, but no change in motion. Right? If it's moving, it stays moving that way. Uh, if it's uh, 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 stationary, it remains stationary. Again, inertia. Right? We're maintaining the state. Remember that um, inertia comes from that Latin word that actually means idle. Okay? You're just staying in the same state, which can be moving. All right. <clears throat> So here we go. Um, now, looking at this setup here, if I'm trying to calculate net force, okay, um, there's going to be mass and acceleration, but we're talking about gravity here, right? Because gravity is operating down. Uh, but not just that. Oh, I almost forgot about this three times thing. Uh, this guy can hold three times that mass. So it's not just mass, it's three times the mass. Okay. Now, uh, not all of that mass is uh, working purely down, right? Some of that mass uh, is applying its force that away. Okay, so you actually have to take into consideration um, that we're talking about this particular, uh, this particular acceleration in the down direction. Now again, we're going to use sine Right, we're going to use sine there uh, because again, here is the here's the angle that's opposite over hypotenuse, and so we can figure out how much of this math mass is actually trying to accelerate directly downward as opposed to the horizontal component uh, trying to move uh, just uh, you know to the left down the slope. But I also have to take in consideration the coefficient of static friction. Okay, now when I'm uh, doing coefficient of static friction. Okay, I means uh, this object is being accelerated, right, down, but also to the left, right, this, this direction. So, what I have to do is use this same information, again, 3mg, because we're still talking about this object, but three times this mass. Again, uh, the object is accelerating downward because of gravity, but... We want to consider how much of that gravity is being in this direction. So we're actually going to take into consideration the cosine of that of that angle. And then, okay, so he, here's you know pretty much our our, our 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 net force. Okay, this is what we're talking about. Now that is going to be completely opposed by the force applied. So that when we add everything up, it's zero. Remember? Because it's got to be force applied. It's got to be force applied. Again, how am I going to uh, define force applied? In terms of mass times acceleration, acceleration due to gravity. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take this term, 
substitute it in there just to make things easier. And you'll see that I get to cancel a lot of things in this uh, in this setup if I do it this way. But what I really need to do right here um, is solve for uh, for uh, coefficient of static friction because I'm being asked what is the coefficient of static friction between the load and the slope. I need to solve for this bad boy right here. Okay, I just substituted that. And so what I'm going to do here is, oh, oh, that's a negative. That's going to do a whole bunch of gobbledygook. Okay, so trust me, this this will take a while. I don't want to make this video too long. We're already 11 minutes here. So what I'm going to end up with, if you solve for coefficient of static friction appropriately, and you know, don't screw up the signs as you as you're moving everything everything along, you're going to have coefficient of static friction is equal to three m g sine theta minus mg, because remember, I replaced force applied with mg, that by 3mg cosine theta. Okay, we have that. It's actually not that scary of a setup. It's just kind of getting here. That's that's kind of the, the mental burden. Now, we have a situation that doesn't happen all that much, okay? You might think, okay, can I cancel this? These are multiplying together. Can I cancel that? Okay, yeah, cool, but check this out. There's another MD over here. And because MG is in both of these terms, even though they're being subtracted, which is usually the boogaboo, right? Uh, you can only uh, cancel things when uh, everything's being multiplied together, usually because the same term isn't necessarily in everything, right? That's a problem. But here, we actually cancel that and that and that, right? So that's pretty darn cool. It's pretty darn fancy. And so what we end up with is um, this actually being equal to 1, right? So it doesn't completely go away, but it's a lot easier to work with. Um, so let's set this up. Uh, let's see. I'm going to start putting this. Here. What's the angle? So the angle is sine, gosh darn it, sine 30. Set up with 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for sine of 30 degrees, so 3, 0 0.5, minus 1, divided by 3, so cosine of 30, oh, that's a whole bunch of stuff, um, I'll consider my sig figs later. I guess oh, I'd go three sig fig. Okay. Now let's clean that up. Three times uh, zero point five. I can do that in my head. One point five zero minus one point zero zero. Oh, I should have included that. Then three times. Three sig figs, I'll go two point six zero. Okay, so let's try it out. Divided by one. No, that's divided by minus. Now divide by 2.60, and I end up with a whole bunch of stuff on the calculator, uh, but based, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's see, should I use 2, 6, or 3, three six, here, oh, but that was based on that, so that shouldn't pull me back, so that should be, that, this should have been 3 sig figs really, if I was paying attention, uh, but subtract, so that, oh, but I'm subtracting here, so that should be two places past the decimal, so this is actually kind of like 0 0.50, two places past the decimal, and then divide, this has two sig figs, so I should be using two significant figures, so I'm going to report that with two significant figures, and uh, coefficients of friction, whether they be static or kinetic, 
uh, don't have units, so my coefficient of static friction here is 0 0.19.